Swedish underworld assassin who travelled to the UK to carry out a Christmas Eve hit on a reality TV star's brother on the doorstep of his London townhouse was today convicted of his murder. Flammer Alex Bequiri, who's 36 years old, the father of two, whose sister, Missy Bequiri, appeared in Real Housewives of Cheshire, was blasted 10 times in two seconds with a semi-automatic pistol in front of his wife and their two-year-old son. Harrowing CCTV footage showed him arriving hand-in-hand hand with his wife from dinner at Sloan Square restaurant, where he was set upon by Anis Hemisi, who was 24 years old, who shot him dead from behind. Deborah Krasniki was seen screaming and cradling her son as her husband dropped to the floor, having been hit by eight bullets. Bekiri, who had joint Swedish and Albanian nationality, claimed to have been in the music business, but had been involved in the international drug trade from Spain, through the Netherlands and into Scandinavia since 2007, and had been arrested several times in Europe. He had become increasingly worried about his security in the months before his death, and when dining out, he would send his wife in first and sit facing the door. Hamasi, who was a professional kickboxer, carried out a four-hour reconnaissance mission two days before the hit on Battersea Church Road, disguised as a litter picker, donning a high-vis jacket and trousers, sunglasses and a full-face latex mask. Hamisi made several errors, including using a lady's designed bicycle with a basket on the front for reconnaissance. In Sweden, this considered unisex, but in Britain is mainly used by women, which made him stand out like a sore thumb. The killer stopped using the bike, along with his high-vis litter picker's disguise, after he was confronted by a Battersea resident who found it suspicious that he was cleaning both a private estate and a council road. So Hemisi was today found guilty of murder and possession of a firearm at a Crown Court after a two-month trial. Fellow Swedish national, Estevan Pino Muenziga, who's 35 years old, was acquitted of murder but found guilty of the alternative charge of manslaughter. Tobias Anderson, is 32, and Bawa Carrera, is 23, also from Sweden, were acquitted of both charges. Clifford Rolox from Islington and Dutch national Claude Isaac Castor, who's 31, from St. Martin in the Caribbean, were found guilty of perverting the course of justice after being hired locally to clean up the flat where the killer had stayed. Bikiri, a major figure in Swedish organised crime, was the latest victim of a string of tit-for-tat shootings as his gang battled for domination of the market for smuggling drugs into Sweden and Spain and the Netherlands. Moments after the shooting, his wife Deborah called her husband's associate Naif Adawi, who's 37 years old, who had also moved to Battersea from Sweden to warn him, maybe someone's coming for you as well, watch out. Adawi was jailed for eight years in Denmark in 2010 for aggravated robbery with a lethal weapon over a £7 million heist on a security firm, one of the largest heists in the country's history, had already survived one attempt on his life. Gunman opened fire as he left his Melbourne apartment in 2019 carrying his newborn baby daughter, who was dropped but not injured as Adawi ran away. But his partner, Karen Hakim, who's 31, was shot multiple times and killed. Close friends Adawi and Bakiri were both kingpins in the Swedish drugs gang run by Daniel Petrovisky, who's 38, who was sentenced to five years imprisonment last June for an aggravated drugs offence. They were locked in a bloody surf war with a rival organised crime group headed by Amir Meki, who's 24, who was also involved in large-scale trafficking of cocaine and cannabis and arrested in Dubai in 2020. Violence between the two gangs, including kidnap and murder, escalated from the middle of 2018 and by the following summer both Adawi and Bakiri had become targets. But Meki's men were not Bakiri's only enemies. Police intel suggests he was regularly in disputes with or in debt to criminal associates, including Albanian gangs. Bakiri had installed top-of-the-range CCTV at his home and when dining out, as I said, he would send his wife in first and she would sit facing the door. On the night he was murdered, she had sat at the table in a Sloan Square restaurant, taking a photo and sent it to him before he joined her. Bakiri was right to be cautious. However, the CCTV camera he hoped would protect his family and said captured with shocking clarity and sound in the moment, a masked assassin shot him dead from behind with a semi-automatic handgun, firing ten times. So apparently, his sister was married to Anders Lingard, a former Manchester United goalkeeper. 
So back in 2018, he was named as one of Sweden's most wanted men after investigators said he was part of an international drug smuggling ring who moved £2 million worth of cannabis into Scandinavia. At the time, police said Bakuri fled a bust at the border in bare feet, but the drugs charges were later dropped and he was instead found guilty of illegally handling smuggled goods, including cigarettes and alcohol, and given a suspended sentence. So how did the cops identify the hitman? So Anis Hemesi, as I said, wore latex masks and donned disguises including as a litter picker, carrying out for reconnaissance. However, CCTV footage allowed detectives to trace the shooter on foot, then by bike from Battersea Church Road down the Thames towards Oyster Wharf. A local team hired to clean up had removed a large suitcase and a rucksack on Christmas Day, but police were already inside when they returned two days later to finish the job. Met Police Detective Sergeant Brett Scroll and said the defendants have underestimated quite how much CCTV there is throughout London. We think they would never have thought that we would actually have been able to track them as far back to that flat in the first place. That's because in Sweden they have much less CCTV due to the restrictions of what it can be used for. The flat was a treasure trove for forensic investigators who recovered gunshot residue from a ridgeback bite used by Hemesy in his getaway. Officers also found the litter picker and black bin bags used as part of his disguise. Crucially for the investigation, in one of the bins was a ripped up piece of ticket stub which had part of Hemisi's name on it. Officers were able to track the killer to Heathrow from where he flew to Copenhagen in Denmark in the early hours of Christmas Day by using his own name. Bank records obtained by Swedish police showed the gunman had bought a high-vis jacket and trousers, boots and a black beanie hat he used along with a latex mask and litter picker to pose as a street cleaner. The senior Crown Prosecutor, Louis Attrell, said the shooting was a professional organised killing, but there were mistakes. One of the errors was made by Pino Moinziga when he bought the distinctive dark ladies' bike with a basket on the front to be used as reconnaissance. Mr Scrollson said the bike would stand out when you see a male riding it, but was the common stepover design ridden by men and women in Sweden. Hermesi stopped using the bike along with a high-vis litter picker disguise after he was confronted by a Battersea resident who found it suspicious. The dog walker asked the hitman, excuse me, who do you work for? Who do you work for? Hermesi walked off as he was told, get away from this estate please. So Hermesi denied being a professional hitman during his trial and told the jury he was in London to watch Netflix and chill with a woman he had met online. He told jurors he had never heard of Mr Bakiri and had no motive to murder him and had not been paid to do so. He said he may have read about some of the notorious criminals involved in the Swedish gang conflict in newspapers but did not know them and had never met or spoken with them. So all those found guilty today are going to be sentenced next week. So guys, that's a crazy story there coming. Let me know what you think. It's your boy GT. Keep it locked, keep it real.